لا الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي لا يحمد على مكروه سواه حمده حقه علينا فله الحمد في الاولى والاخره وله الحمد في العشي والابكار وله الحمد في الليل وفي النهار وله الحمد من قبل ومن بعد وله الحمد على كل حال واشهد ان لا اله الا الله المعز والمذل القابض والباسط الخافض والرافع الظاهر والباطن تفرد بالربوبية والألوهية إله واحد ورب واحد وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عبده ورسوله أرسل على فترة من الرسل وقلة من العلم وضلالة في الناس من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له قل اللهم مالك الملك تؤتي الملك من تشاء وتنزع الملك ممن تشاء وتعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء بيدك الخير انك على كل شيء قدير اما بعد brothers sisters whose conviction and commitment and covenant with Allah override everything else on this Jumu'ah it be it behooves us to consider in light of our generation and with the experience that has accumulated some of Allah's enlightening words to us. He says, And these words are not just meant to be repeated or recited or rehearsed. They are meant to become a force that can modify behavior and that can penetrate 
through the erroneous information that has besieged the Muslim faculty of thinking in our time. Let us take on this occasion some of these ayat in the Qur'an and see how they have come to life because of the unbending determination that is expressed by those who have dedicated their lives to Allah. The first ayah, the words from on high are وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةً وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ وَنُمَكِّنَ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنُرِيَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَحْذَرُونَ An average Muslim knows that this ayah is outlining and expressing the condition of human beings who were committed to Allah but who were under the suzerainty or the mandate or the dominion of the Pharaoh in the world. To those pioneering bearers of scripture and the word of Allah he says to them that it is Allah's will that he favor those who have been dispossessed and oppressed in the world or in the land وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Not only that, and it doesn't stop here. And he says, وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةِ We will render these dispossessed and these oppressed individuals and societies we will render them, we will make them leaders. وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ And we will also render them or make them heirs or inheritors to this divine affair. And then we will show the Pharaoh and his assistant and his inner circle and his forces وَنُرِيَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَحْذَرُونَ We will show these dictators in the world from the Pharaoh of ancient history to the Pharaoh of distant times. We will show them what they are cautious not to see coming from the oppressed and the dispossessed. Wanurid. Listen, these are Allah's words. These words don't come from politicians. They don't come from theoreticians they don't come from people of a national interest from opportunists 
from troublemakers. No, these words come from a source that promises and fulfills its promise. وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ وَنُمَكِّنَ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ We will strongly fortify their position in the societies of this world. And then we will show these autocrats. We will show these authoritarian rulers what they don't want to see coming from the oppressed and the dispossessed. Now even though this ayah speaks to the condition of the, the avant-garde of Scripture, those who carried this message early in time, it is applicable to all who carry that responsibility. All who are dispossessed and who are oppressed. And what do we see? What do we see in our time? Let's not dislocate ourselves and make believe that this Qur'an is a book of history only that doesn't speak about our issues today. And let us not also dislocate ourselves into the future saying that this Qur'an will only have meanings when a certain personality comes along. This Qur'an is your responsibility. You! وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةً وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ وَنُمَكِّنَ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنُرِيَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَحْذَرُونَ can we see a parallel between the characterization of this ayah and the real events of life around us now? Tell me, are there dispossessed and are there oppressed people in this world? Certainly there are. Does Allah's words apply to these types of people? If these types of people are subjects of Allah, they, these words apply to them. Is it possible to see this happen? Have we not witnessed in the course 23 years ago, have we not witnessed people who came out and defied all the powers in their country. Let us be more specific about this. The Muslim people in Iran who established the first base of an independent and a free Islamic expression of the Qur'an and the Prophet in our world. What type of circumstances were they in? Did they have all the power around? Were they in positions in the military, in the government, to bring about this change? Or did this change begin from deep down inside the condition of people who were dispossessed? Who was robbing the resources, the petroleum, the natural resources that are in that country. Wasn't it this government here in the United States? And the other multi and transnational corporations in the world, they were stealing the resources of that particular people. What happened? What did they do? What did they say? They say we had to go to the Soviet Union or we had to go to another superpower to have an independent 
and a sovereign and a free state and society. Or, and this is in the span of our lifetimes, not history, something you have to dig out of references in libraries with a book out of print and the rest of the cumbersome efforts that sometimes go into looking for the truth. The truth is presented to us in our lifetime. What happens? An imam emerges. What happens to the Muslim minds now? No one can speak the truth. This is what happens. Whether you're a Muslim or whether you're not a Muslim, the facts speak for themselves. An imam comes out of the condition of the oppressed and dispossessed people among whom he is living. And he changes the course of history. And for 23 years, the fulfillment of this promise of Allah has been inching its way forward. Or else, why do we have people now in the world speaking about what they are calling an axis of evil? When did we have politicians speak about evil before? Now, are, now they are borrowing religious terms. The slip of their tongue say, says that they are on a crusade. Against who? Against people who are dispossessed? Against people who are displaced? against people who are maltreated, people who are in all the oppressed parts of the world and Muslim territories in the world. Muslims fall into this and oppressed people who don't consider themselves renegades or rebellious against Allah fall into the range of this ayah. وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةً Not only Allah wants to favor these types of people, He wants to make them leaders. But in the opposite direction, you have the mouthpieces, you have the media of the shayateen on earth who are telling you, where are you going? Now you have reached the extent of becoming a threat to civilization. What? This is Muslims because they want to get rid of the Pharaoh, the live and kicking Pharaoh of today, they have become terrorists? What happened to rationality? What happened to common sense? What happened to reasoning? We are in our own lands, minding our own business, wanting to become the masters of our own future, not interfering in the internal affairs of other people. And then you want to say, this has become an axis of evil. Allah's words have become the representation of this evil. This is what you are telling us. Allah wants to favor those who you want to oppress. And it is possible. See, they've been living for 23 years. These shayateen, they have been living from year to year thinking that this base for the Muslims, this first power base in our modern history 
will disintegrate. They tried everything. They launched their war of aggression that continued for eight years. And the Islamic State did not collapse. And then they turn around and they say, they hope, they work on trying to destabilize this Islamic accomplishment from inside. And then they pray for liberals. And they try to build bridges with moderates. And they accuse the decision makers in this Islamic state of being fanatics and not giving freedom to the people. And they draw a picture of gloom and doom that after 23 long, arduous, challenging, uninterrupted years, the Islamic power base is still there. So now, they want to begin a new chapter in their attempts and their assault and their attack against this Islamic base in which, from which Allah wants to favor the committed Muslims and the oppressed peoples in the world. Now, they clobber together an international effort and they are trying to place their military forces in physical proximity to lace this Islamic State from north to east to south to west with hostile forces. Claiming that it is an area that supports, or a country that supports terrorism. Supports terrorism what? You look at yourself, you who are, who are making these accusations. Look at yourself. The State Department, the Pentagon the intelligence agencies here, the executive, the Congress, the judiciary, all of you, stand at attention and obey the Israeli terror in this world, the Zionist terrorist state in this world. Look at yourself. You've given it Atomic capability, nuclear striking potential. You've stuffed it with weapons of mass destruction. And then you turn around and you say Muslims who want self-determination have become the terrorists. We thought you'd have more thinking power in your mind. We thought that you are able to coexist with peoples of other persuasions, of other religions, of other civilizations in this world. If there is an exchange of respect and recognition that flows in both directions, but you cannot even tolerate that. You're afraid of oppressed people. You're afraid of the reaction of the poor people in this world. So now you're acting with hysteria. You're very nervous at the sight of the survival of an Islamic power base for 23 years. And we know you are nervous. And this is only the beginning. You can't reverse Allah's determination and His will. وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ This 
revolution in the Islamic land of Iran gave this ayah practical meanings. There's no longer pontificators from the minbar. There's no longer a theoretical expression of Islam. Now it is the fact and the truth that is coming alive in this power base of Islam. And we know that you dislike it. We know that you are averse to it. We know how hostile you are to it. And it shows from everything you say to everything you do. Another ayah in Allah's sacred scripture. يريدون ليطفئوا نور الله بأفواههم والله متم نوره ولو كره الكافرون هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون Remember Allah's words are the infinite truth of the matter. And he says, they, who are, who is they? The definition of they follows. They want to put out the light of Allah with their words. Now, this defines to us who they are. Who's putting out this flow of information that wants to extinguish Allah's light? Allah is saying one thing, and they contradict it. Who are they? Do words make themselves up? Or they are writers. They are institutions. They are think tanks. They are research centers. There's the media. And all of them, what are they about when, they, when it comes to this Islam? They want to extinguish what Allah has to say. And they think that they have gone a long way in doing that. يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ But then Allah says, وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورَهِ Allah will see to it that His light is completed. But how is that? Allah completes His light with Muslims who sit around watching, doing nothing, or with Muslims who are out there in the real world, involved, having these words of Allah penetrate their mind and their heart and then being, having them translated into action. This is what's happening in the real world around. You, say, you think that the United States military, when it goes to Muslim lands, we are dealing with a fairy tale here. Or, these are people who want to kill. And who do you want to kill? When you send the military overseas. Who do you want to kill? People who don't have any rights at all. You're the ones who are speaking very loudly about democracy and election and freedom and justice and liberty. Don't you know the people you're going to kill, they have no freedom, no election, no liberty, no justice, no equity. And you're going out there to kill them. What's your rationale? It seems like you are the source of evil. There's no axis of evil out there. There's a source of evil people. Here. And how do we know this? Just by reading what Allah has to say. Do you have the courage? You, yes, 
you who are hostile to the expression of Islamic self-determination, do you have the brains to come and tell us we are wrong? We welcome that. With open minds, with open hands, with open hearts, come and tell us we are wrong. Let us have a, an understanding of where you are and where we are. Well, you're afraid to do that. Fear is deeply seated inside of you that you can't even come up to Muslims and exchange your thoughts and your ideas about this. Remember, your militaries are in our part of the world. It's not our militaries who are in your part of the world. يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ You see how they want to extinguish Allah's light with their words. Allah's light is rekindled in your heart. But when they throw their information, their propaganda at your heart and your mind, that candle goes out. There's no longer any hope. يريدون أن يطفئوا نور الله بأفواههم والله متم نوره ولو كره الكافرون So what? They'll hate the process. Let them hate it. Let them be consumed by their hatred. Who's nervous? When the cameras are around, who are the nervous people? The ones who have the power and the force of the Pharaoh today. They look nervous. They don't even know how to smile correctly. You can see it in their face. And some of them are hiding. And here, the oppressed people in the world. We're out here. We're up front. Only thing we have is the word of truth and the desire for justice. And that upsets you so much. It is Allah, it is He who has dispatched His emissary, His prophet, with guidance and the deen of truth so that it prevails over all other systems. This is also no longer a hypothetical. We're not talking about a theoretical issue now. This has become tangible. We can see now, throughout 23 years of a power base for Muslims, that it is possible for the Islamic deen to prevail all over or over all other deeds, all over all other systems. And they're afraid of that. Why are you afraid? You shouldn't be afraid. All of this is for justice. The only thing we want is justice. And because of that, you accuse us? You, you throw all types of accusations at us because we want this justice? What is the Islamic State in Iran? What is it doing? Does it have its military bases in the United States? Then why is this talk about evil? Why is all of this now... Preparation, at least mental type of preparation for an outbreak of hostility against the accomplishment, the successful accomplishment that the Muslims have scored in our lifetime. Should we, should we dialogue with these types of people? Will they be willing to dialogue with us? We haven't seen that willingness. And therefore, we assess those who call 
for a dialogue with these types of people as being inexperienced with their nature. They don't have enough experience about what we are talking about. Of course, it's nice to have a dialogue. But you're going to have a dialogue with the Shaytan al-Akbar. This is what they have become here. They have become a hyper Shaytan. The policies of this country towards Muslims reflect all types of animosities and grudges and hatred. They are the ones who are expressing hatred towards us and then they conveniently bring their cameras around and say, we are people of hate. We are the ones who hate. We don't hate. We don't hate virtue. We don't hate peace. We don't hate justice. But we do hate warmongers. We do hate dictators. We do hate policies of discrimination and prejudice and bias against us wherever we are in the world. And if any Muslim tells you he doesn't hate injustice, suspect his Islam. هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون It is he, Allah Azza wa Jal, who has dispatched his emissary, his apostle, with guidance and the deen of truth. Can't you see it? Mankind now should see the fact that the systems that are trying to bring justice to man have failed. Whether it is a system of socialism or whether it is a system built around capital. They have failed. So why can't you consider a system that comes to you from your Lord, from your sustainer, from the designer and the maker of life and existence, who knows how we operate and how we function as human beings and societies in the world. It's time to consider this. It's time to overcome your historical prejudice. And look at Islam for what it really is. After 23 years now, there is a sense of what it means to have Islam as a system in this world. Don't show it hostility. Show it understanding. And for those, for those of us who are closer to this expression of Islam than others. But let us be more frank. For those of us who are from that land, natives of Iran, what happened after 23 years? You no longer have the courage to call a spade a spade, to define a shaitan as a shaitan. What happened? You mean it was convenient? It was the, the right thing to do 23 years ago and now it's no longer the right thing to do? The shaitan has changed his colors, has fooled you. Some of you are looking for building bridges with this shaitan when he is actively killing Muslims in the millions. A fast death and a slow death and everything between both deaths. Shaitan, is, his hands are bloody in the murder policies against Muslims. And some of you want to 
reach some type of normalization with this shaitan. If the Imam who launched this blessed Islamic effort, if he were alive and you could look him in the face, you would have the courage to say that we want to normalize our relation, our relations with the United States. Let the United States show or intimate or suggest even a notion that it is willing to normalize its relations with Muslims. And then we will consider. But it doesn't even want to suggest that. And the shaitan goes on the offensive and he reverses the issue. The ma'aruf becomes the munkar and the munkar becomes the ma'aruf. Islam becomes kufr and kufr becomes Islam. And with all of this coming your way, you, especially you, who consider yourselves the ferment of this Islamic gain for the world, of this divine trust that came true in your lifetime. Right now, you're backtracking on the Imam and his line and his words and his policies and his ideas. And you have many apologies and many excuses. You no longer have, you no longer have the strength of words only to stand up to this Pharaoh of all times, the Pharaoh in the White House dwarfs the Pharaoh of the time of Moses. And you want to have good relations or normal relations. We know, we hear, we see. We said, let politicians earlier, years ago, when we wanted people to understand firsthand the nature of this beast here. This is a wounded beast. Here in Washington, the government is acting like a wounded animal. It wants to strike back. It wants to kill. We thought that if some politicians were given a margin of freedom to experiment with this shaitan, they will learn precious lessons from their experiments or their experimentational policies. What does it take? You want them to go over there and begin to drop bombs on you. At that time, you will wake up and begin to realize, truly, this is a real shaitan we are dealing with. Remember those first years, you and I used to say, وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْا يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُوا أَمْثَالَكُمْ and if you decide to abandon this trust, this effort, this revolution, Allah will exchange you for others who will not do what you did. Looks like some people are going in that direction. Some of us who even used to be here had been stung by a shaitan in his capital at the masjid here. They turn around and in several years after that they want us to go and vote for the pharaoh of the land. This is how treacherous their course has become. 
These are words of truth. Allah sees through people. Allah knows what's in your heart and what you're going to be 10 years from now or 50 years from now or 50 hours from now. He knows this. You were try, you're trying to trick Allah 20 years ago by making believe that you are against the shaitan and akbar. ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُوا أَمْثَالَكُمْ أَقُولُ خَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ دَوْهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَأَنْتُمْ عَلَى يَقِينٍ بِالْإِجَابَةِ وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ غَافِرُ الدَّنْبِ وَقَابِلُ التَّوْبِ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لنكونن من الخاسرين الحمد لله بجميع المحامد على جميع نعم صلى الله وسلم على المبعوث خيرا ورحمة وهدى لكافة الأمم محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Sisters and brothers whose faith and confidence in Allah should only increase not decrease Keep in mind that every Jumu'ah brings us closer to Allah. We are going to surrender these responsibilities after the lifetime that He has given us. And every week, we are a week closer to surrendering these responsibilities. And we leave the conclusion of this affair in Allah's hands. People better than us have been along this trail before and now they are with Allah. And people better than us will follow us on this trail and they will be with Allah. Let us consider one of the achievements of the past 23 years was to have the Hajj, a place of sensitizing the Muslims to their common accountabilities and responsibilities. To have the Hajj a springboard for Islamic independence by proclaiming al baraa from the Mushrik. To disavow and to sever all relationships of dependency upon the Mushrik from the Hajj from Mecca, from Al Bayt Al Haram, during the month Al Haram. This was one of the achievements of the past 23 years, only now to be watered down into a pocket instead of being a spirit that flows among all of those who are around the Kaaba. It is isolated into a pocket of people who are in the margins of the Hajj or who are on the sidelines of the Hajj. Why? You've also been fooled by the Saudi Arabian government. Imagine if the United States is baiting you with this government. Imagine if they can have some of us think, what are we doing here? Look! The Saudis themselves are under verbal attack from the United States. Big deal. So what if the, some newspapers began a campaign against the Saudi government? Is that what counts? We will believe it when these Saudi royals, these Saudi decadent class of rulers, when they withdraw their hundreds of billions of dollars from here. At that moment, we can begin to reconsider 
There's something new. There's a qualitative change. But just words that flow back and forth. Oh, why should we be protesting the Saudis when now the Saudis seem to be falling in line with the general Muslim public in the world? Falling in line where? What have they done? What are they doing to give them that type of credit? And imagine if they take us along that line and we begin to question ourselves towards the Saudi monarchy. We can hear the jiggles and the laughs in the background by the Shayateen in Langley, Virginia and in Foggy Bottom and in the White House and on Capitol Hill. Oh, we smuckered those Muslims. We really knew how to trap them. They think there is a difference between the rulers in Saudi Arabia and the rulers in the United States. And some Muslims are being taken in that direction. What is it going to take for them to understand? From year to year, they are restricting the Hajj even more. Who says that in order for you to go to the Hajj, you have to go in, a, in company or in a group of people? You no longer can go to Mecca as a Muslim individual. Where did that come from? came from Langley, Virginia. It didn't come from the Qur'an and the Prophet. And we have something good to say about the Saudi government. If there are some politicians who are being baited by that government and its masters in the White House. Let them be advised not to fall into that trap. What are we going to do? What are we going to say when it's too late? This year, like the previous years, what value are we going to see in the Hajj? If we cannot raise the first 29 ayat of Surah At-Tawbah and say this is what it means to be Hanifan Musliman walasna min al mushrikeen you can't say that and then you have to bow down right now just because some journalists are throwing into our attention some critical words about the Saudi government Mature, grow up, have experience. Only after that may we expect Allah to deliver us from this condition that we are in. Rabbana afrigh alayna sabra wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala alqawm alkafirin. Allahumma ansurna bilhaq. اللهم انصر الحق بنا اللهم بك نحاول وبك نصاول وبك نقاتل ربنا اجعلنا مقيم الصلاة ومن ذرياتنا ربنا وتقبل دعاءنا ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا صل على محمد وآل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم ربنا بارك على محمد وآل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم 
إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستعين صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والفجر وليال عشر والشفع والوتر والليل إذا يسر هل في ذلك قسم الذي حجر ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بعاد إرم ذات العماد التي لم يخلق مثلها في البلاد وتمود الذين جابوا الصخر بالواد وفرعون ذي الأوتاد الذين طغوا في البلاد فأكثروا فيها الفساد فصب عليهم ربك سوف عذاب إن ربك لبالمرصاد فأما الإنسان إذا ما ابتلاه ربه فأكرمه ونعمه فيقول رب أكرما وأما إذا ما ابتلاه فقدر عليه رزقه فيقول ربي أهانا كلا بل لا تكرمون اليتيم ولا تحاضون على طعام المسكين وتأكلون التراث أكلا لما وتحبون المال حبا جما كلا